Today on Lake Commandos. The Kalahari Desert, that's what it looks like. <laughs> Steve Panaz steps up his game and takes on one of Freshwater Fishing's original Lake Commandos. Legendary Hall of Fame angler, Ron Lindner. That's a nice fish, nice fish any place. I love fishing new water. The challenge is always the same. Find fish, trigger strikes. Ooh, that's a big fish. But what I really love is beating the other guy. I got a fish. This is Lake Commandos. Taking the Lake Commando challenge is never easy. An unknown lake, an untested bite, and a worthy opponent tends to bring out the best in every Lake Commando. But sometimes you just have to take things to the next level, like getting in the boat with a true living fishing legend, and perhaps the original Lake Commando himself, Ron Lindner. My instinct, my first instinct, is to look at the map and look for the longest structure, the biggest structure that comes out way out on the lake and start on the tip of it and fish from the outside in. Question for you, what, how do you use water clarity when you're searching for fish on a new lake? For me, if the water clarity is good, that means there's usually, but not always, oxygen in the deeper water. So if we're gonna go checking something out, let's start on the deep side and work in. You know, Ron has been an innovator in the fishing industry for years. He and Al have really driven millions of anglers into catching more fish. I had the old In Fisherman sticker on my boat back in high school. Today, Steve and Ron are faced with a pretty straightforward mission. Find and catch post cold front largemouth bass on a mid-sized natural lake. At just over 1,500 acres and with a max depth of 55 feet, Today's lake is big enough to support a wide range of cover and habitat options from deep water humps to main lake points, to well-defined weed lines and an assortment of shallow cover, including bulrushes, wild rice, and lily pads. It's up to our commandos to decide where the bass will be, and more importantly, how to catch them. My initial idea on a lake like this, it's a it's very plain, simple jig with a craw. It's the easiest to fish particularly in weeds. It's relatively weedless. Bass like it, you can fish it fast. That's the important part. Fast and it's hard to fish bad. You drag it, lift it, jig it. You know, there's ways to fish it better than others, but like I said, it's, it's a relatively simple approach. If, if this is what they're biting, I'm gonna beat them. Not only that, I'll probably beat them good. I'm gonna go with a, a, a power worm today, a 10-inch power worm, and I'll tell you why. We've got a, a post cold front. We've got some wind that's gonna be picking up today. And, and we've got a high sun with no clouds and we may need to go more finesse. So I'm gonna pick worms, uh, uh, power worms. Either it's gonna be a 10 inch like this one. There's some big fish by reputation in this lake. So I'm gonna fish this on a five odd hook, a 3 16 ounce sinker, might go heavier or lighter. This is 14 pound Berkeley XT monofilament. Just a great uh, line for all around use. Seven foot, six inch, medium heavy Abel Garcia Veritas rod. And this is the uh, Rebo MGX Extreme 7 1 to 1 retrieve ratio, super lightweight, fun to fish. And this is a bait that's going to take the legendary Ron Litter down today. That tomahawk point, that's the longest point in the whole lake. It's across there, so I'm going to run across. See, the weeds are sticking up here at 5, 6 foot. We're getting a little high. I gotta see what the drop off looks like. The water is darker than I thought. As guest, Ron gets the opportunity to start the competition. Sticking to his plan, he has located the most prominent point on the lake and will start on the deep edge. This is good though, just follow it around just the way you're going, this is perfect. They'll fish Ron's jig pattern for two hours, then switch to Steve's worm program. But at the end of the day, only one can be top commando. I'm watching a depth finder here, Steve, and all I see is nothing. The Kalahari Desert, that's what it looks like. <laughs> you see anything up there? Nothing. Boy, this lake is uh, proving to be a surprise. I'm starting to think we're gonna have to go shallow. I am too. 
If I'm going on a new body of water for bass, the first thing I look for is one of the largest, biggest uh, points in the lake. In summer, that's the, where I would start. And then from there, I just start eliminating and move in, move in, move in. And God head up there, get out of the wind and start beating the bank. See if we can get bit. Eventually, you're going to be in the lily pads, the rice, uh, wood, if you're up on shore. So uh, it's, that's the best way. I like to start from deep to shallow. There are other guys that better go shallow to deep. Uh, I'm going to get him out of the run. It's a big fish. Is, is, it, is it bass? It's a bass. It is a bass. He's, i got to get down in this grass. It's a big fish. <sighs> Oh, that's a large, that's a big fish. Ronald, look at that bass. <laughs> that's the way to start the day on the first fish. In the pads, in the grass. Look at that belly. Thing looks like it hasn't even spawned. Might not. Wow, look at that, mule. Yeah, that is a tank for its length. Whew. Hit it on that flip. I think maybe it's a shallow fish. It's our first bite in how long? The move shallow pays off and the commandos are on the board. But does this fish hold the key to success or will it steer the guys in the wrong direction? Lake Commandos is brought to you by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Trilene, Anglers Trust Berkeley Trilene, Abu Garcia for life, Power Pole Shallow Water Anchor, Swift, Silent, Secure, Garmin, the clearest scanning sonar images on the water, and by Plano, protect your passion. Lake Commando Steve Panaz is in the midst of an epic battle with legendary angler Ron Lindner. So far, the bite has been tough, but Ron Linder built a Hall of Fame career on his ability to figure out even the toughest bites. For nearly 60 years, the Lindner name has been synonymous with fishing. Ron, along with his brother Al, have done as much or more to educate anglers and develop angling innovations than anyone in the business. You know what, this is just like uh, Al and I used to go barnstorming in the early days. We'd go on a lake, never been there, don't know nothing about it. If you just approach it in a analytical sort of way, go out there, deep shell, somewhere in between, you'll finally find it and probably do better. You do better than if you're on a lake that you think you know. But today, even the legend is being challenged. Ron's original deep water jig pattern was a bust. So the guys moved shallow where Steve Panaz stuck a big fish right away. But since then, it's been nothing but small bass with one unusual exception. Good one. Oh, oh what that's... is a dogfish? Oh, <laughs> the, the Bowsers, I like them. <laughs> when you got days like we got today. That's just that's sad. That's your look. What do you mean? <laughs> you want to a snob or something? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't tell me that's good looking. It is. That's hideous. I like him. Even the switch to Steve's power worm hasn't changed the size of the biters in the shallow and mid-depth cover. Where are the fours and fives? So the guys have decided to Four, alternate three. between Ron's jig and Steve's they worm will. until they yep. can find the right combination of presentation and location. You know, I can't complain about the fishing. We're catching lots of fish. Uh, the problem is we're just not getting the size that we need or want. You know, this lake has a reputation of big fish, so I don't know. What's going on? We had a big cold front come through. Water temp dropped about five degrees overnight. And uh, we battled with some wind. It's starting to mellow out here later in, later in the afternoon now. And maybe we'll pick some up. We're gonna continue to work this deeper weed edge. It seems like the fish that we are getting are a little bit bigger, but uh, it's just a lot, of, a lot of these things right now. There's tons and tons of these, you know, two, two three year old bass and uh, while they're fun to catch, I get a bigger thrill out of fives. There's one. Good one? Nah, no. Down Dude, in that hung, on to, hung on to a weed for a while. You went back, oh I see, you went back to a worm, huh? 
Well, I've been up and back. I've been, yeah. I've been trolling and then going back and up and back. Boy, this is getting frustrating. <laughs>
Reliability starts here. Yeti, wildly stronger. Keep ice longer. Frayville, trusted gear since 1938. Berkeley Power Bait, fish bite and won't let go. And by Abu Garcia for life. It's been a challenge, but Commando Steve Panaz has a small lead on one of his personal fishing heroes, Hall of Fame angler, Ron Lindner. I learned more in a boat today about the history of fishing than I've had in years of reading old magazines and, and going through things. He was at the beginning of the fishing revolution. He was part of the fishing revolution. He drove the fishing revolution. Well, just like you did Lake Commandos here, you, uh, you uh, go out on fresh lakes, except we did it in those days. We had no GPS, we had no maps, we had depth finders, we had you know, flashers, we had the old, the old flashers. But we didn't understand the function of natural lakes, nor, uh, particularly upper Midwestern lakes and in particular bass more than anything. We learned about walleye really by accident and that came in the guiding years. But at the beginning it was primarily bass that we based everything on, it was fishing for bass. The walleye came later. Oh, he's gonna do, woo! Oh, okay, you want another, we need a netter. Uh, if you would oblige, that would be awesome. Now I can stay in the spot here. Thank you, Ron. Whoa! That might be the best one yet. Yeah, good, gooder one. Yeah, look at that one. When we finally made the move back to the deep weed line, fishing not jigs like we did early in the day, but the, but the worms, that's when we really started having success. And once we started catching fish, Catching numbers of fish, numbers of big fish, got relatively easy. Let me get the net for you. Nice fish. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a, that's. That might be the best one of the day so I far. I think it is, it is. That's, Beauty. That's a, a jumbo jack. These are nice fish. You know, it took Steve all, and I all day. We had one right off the bat early in the morning threw us off, we had maybe 50, 60 fish in between. And then finally, in late afternoon here, after catching a whole bunch of little ones up in the mid ranges, we went out deep and started picking up these babies. And that's a nice fish, nice fish any place. Tell you what, Ron, we're running out of time. Next fish, we'll end it, and I'll take you into town and buy you dinner. How's that? Okay, that, that's, a, that's a good deal. Hey! Yeah. Well, last fish of the day. Last fish of the day. You need me to net Well, that? I'll tell you what, no. Why don't you grab this one for me, Steve? Or grab, yeah, net it for me, please. How big a fish? Hey, it's, it's, it's just a fish. It's not a bad one. There we go. Well, Ron, it's not the biggest fish of the day. No, but it was the, you told me you're going to take me out to eat someplace. Well, I, I noticed you caught it right after I mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> let me let this guy go. There he goes. I knew as soon as I mentioned food, you'd catch that last yeah, fish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, we put in a lot of time. A lot of there was a lot of hard fishing today. You know, I, you know, I I actually like tough bites because you learn something on them. But today was a little tougher than I'd I'd hoped for. But we got to figure it out in the end, and that's that, yeah. that's good. Yeah. I could have, you know, we, I could have given you one of Al's secret lakes, and we could have went there and just pounded a whole bunch of four and five pounders. But it, what do you want to do that? Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> We actually learned, we caught some threes and fours. You we, know. Got, we got some really nice fish today. And, and, At the and end. And we figured it out. Yeah. And we figured it out. So. And we did catch, what, 75 fish in between those? I bet. Yeah. So great day in the water, fun day in the water. And listen, the average person would have a day like today, they'd be ecstatic. They'd write it in a book of memories. I'm going to write it in a book of memories. I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. Let me get the motor up. Let's get in. Ron has Ronisms. <laughs> and he drops them when you least expect it. So it'll be a tough road to Poughkeepsie. Dogfish. <laughs> oh, the, the Bowsers. All I see is nothing. The Kalahari Desert. That's what it looks like. <laughs>